Evening all, Daniel Hand, RPG Therapist, and today you'll be glad to know that we're going to conclude, for now, our little crash course on the Story Trinity by looking at the final, ultimate stage in its life cycle, how to actually tell the story that you've spent so much time and effort putting together. I've repeatedly said throughout this little series, if you want to call it that, that the story trinity applies to all stories everywhere, regardless of the medium used to tell it. And I stand by that claim. And so regardless of whether you're here as a therapist, a role player, a novelist, a screenwriter, a comic book writer, whatever, all of this applies to you. I perfectly understand that it's a bit on the basic side and that any of you watching this with even a modicum of experience in storytelling will probably be rolling your eyes at how simplistic it all is. But if you're brand new to all this, you know, you're just starting out as an author, a filmmaker, or yes, as an RPG therapist, I truly hope you found this series at least semi-useful. So, telling a story, how does one actually go about it? Well, once again, it all boils down to those three crucial elements within the story trinity. Say it with me now. Character, setting, obstacle. More specifically, it involves an ongoing stream, or perhaps cycle is a better way of describing it, of taking each of those elements in turn, giving them a moment in the spotlight, and then moving on to the next. Side note, I'm perfectly aware that there will always be exceptions to any rule, so please don't have a go at me in the comments with various examples that don't conform to this model. Peace, peace. Where you actually start the story will, of course, depend entirely on where you want to start it. If you want to offer a sweeping description of the landscape in which events are to take place, you'll be starting with setting. If you want to give a brief glimpse into the protagonist's daily life, you're starting with the character. Or if you want to start on some big, portentous demonstration of an enemy's power, you'd be starting with the obstacle. Lord of the Rings, for instance, very clearly starts with setting. Concerning Hobbits is literally an essay about the culture within that tiny part of Middle-earth. Pride and Prejudice establishes the setting by pointing out the common knowledge that rich men need to get married. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland begins by giving us a zoomed-in view of its eponymous character and what her day was like before a particular rabbit wandered into it. And Avengers Infinity War begins with Thanos, the obstacle we'd been building towards for however many years, wiping out the Asgardian ship. Even in the stories we tell on a daily basis, we always start with one of those three aspects. Setting, the office was freezing today. Obstacle, you have no idea how boring that meeting was. Or character, I'm good, looking forward to the weekend. So if you're trying to get a new project off the ground, regardless of what media you're telling your story in, the way to actually start your story is to just choose one of those core attributes and go with it. If you want to try a fun exercise, take a look at some of your favorite books or movies or you know whatever, and see which part of the story trinity its beginning would fall under. Taking three first lines from Bernard Cornwall that I completely can't quote by heart. The road came from the southern hills and crossed the marshes by the sea. The French were coming. My name is Uhtred. Okay, of those three, which is which? Word of advice, for RPGs, your safest bet is usually to start off with the setting. Describe the world, the weather, the people, the feel. This gives your client time to get settled in the story before they actually have to contribute. And once you've decided which element of the Trinity you want to start with, all you need to do to get the rest of the story is move on to the next one. 
if you kicked off with the setting, your next step is to give a little hint about, or you know, to outright show the obstacle. You've described a ship bobbing along on the ocean waves, and you could say, but things aren't entirely as they seem. Or you could just describe the pirate ship giving chase. If you started with the obstacle, move on to how the character reacts to it. A man in a spiky suit attacks, and now the mutant turtles of a teenage ninja variety have to fight, with or without pizza. And if the character was your opener, you now want to show how they fit into the wider world. It turns out that the reclusive man lives in a swanky house and is mourning the death of his wife by bonding with the puppy she left him. Next. You guessed it. Just move on to the third aspect. You started with the setting, gave a glimpse of the obstacle, now show the character's reaction. You showed us the obstacle, then the character's reaction, now show us how the setting has changed as a result, or how they've moved through the setting. You introduced the character and grounded them within the setting, now it's time to show how the obstacle comes along and turns everything on its head. And once you've done that, repeat. And honestly, that's it. The story trinity becomes a story cycle, and all you need to do is go with the flow. Setting to obstacle to character, or obstacle to character to setting, or character to setting to obstacle, and then back to the start. Let's look at an example quickly. Just picking one game at random off my shelf. Spire, The City Must Fall by Chris Taylor and Grant Howard, Rowan Rook and Deckard. You are a dark elf. You have sworn in blood and sacred shadow to destroy your oppressors, the Elfir, high elves from the frozen north who have claimed your homeland as their own. Spire is a mile-high metropolis, and you hide in its crumbling temples, its lawless undercity, its labyrinthine tunnels, the rotting hole in reality that festers at its centre. Your masters while away their days in opulent cruelty and glittering sunlight far above. Spire is all the world you have ever known, and it must fall. How far are you willing to go for the revolution, and what sacrifices will you make to see the drow in control of Spire once more? You see? Character, drow, setting, Spire, obstacle, revolution, then back to character, how far are you willing to go to achieve said revolution? As we mentioned last time, your primary concern is with the setting and the obstacle, while the client takes ownership of the character. So when you're running a game of Spire, you start by introducing the world of the Spire, a mile-high megastructure that houses an entire city. Then you talk about the High Elves and how they're oppressing Spire's drow citizens. Then you'd invite your client to talk a little bit about their character, you know, who they are, what they do, what their background is, etc. After that, you'd talk about the immediate area the client's character finds themselves in. Maybe they're in the works or moving down towards hard. Followed by a thing happening, uh, an elf here violently beating a drow peasant, for example. And then you ask the client what their character would like to do. Maybe they attack the abuser. Then you describe how the situation advances. People stop to watch what's happening, or the alpha draws a weapon. And then once again, the client decides how the character reacts. And that's it. Just follow the cycle and you won't get lost. And again, sure, there will be times when you want to skip one aspect here and there. but. If you ever find yourself stuck at a particular point in your story, just take a look at what you've most recently described, written, shown, whatever, and move on to the next step in the cycle. This will work for your novel, your script, and your RPG. Have fun. So, what do you think? Sound doable? Give it a try and tell us how it goes down in the comments. And of course, let us know if you have any particular tips for telling a great story that you found useful in your time. While you're down there, please do like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. I'd really appreciate it.
Everyone, as usual, thank you so much for watching this video. I really look forward to speaking with you again next week. So until then, take it easy. Don't do anything I wouldn't do and have a good one. Cheers. Do you like Doctor Who? Do you like psychology? How about Doctor Who psychology? Well, you're in luck. The second edition of Doctor Who Psychology, Times Change, is out now on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever you get your reading material. I contributed a chapter about groupthink and asked the fundamental question that we all must face at least once in our lives. Are you a Dalek? Also, of course, whilst you're there, do check out my own book, Role-Playing Games and Psychotherapy, A Practitioner's Guide. It has everything you need to learn about the story trinity, the story cycle, and has an entire system of game mechanics to help work with your clients. Do pick it up and leave a review on Amazon. I'd much appreciate it.